Good afternoon. It's a wonderful thing to be back in the house of prayer again. To God be all the glory. Amen. It's a wonderful day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and God be glad in it. It's a day of consecration. To God be all the glory. It's a very important day for Pastor Edmonds' family. And we're about to get started. So if there's anybody inside that needs to be in the processional, uh, to step to the vestibule at this time, and they will line you up. Anybody that's uh, in the procession. Amen. And if we have ministers and uh, uh, ministers, these line up. A little more process and ministers in. Uh, Visiting ministers, visiting pastors. Amen.
make sure we have the interests of believers in Christ, empowerment, fellowship, college, and bishops, pastors, and ministers, representing believers in Christ, empowerment, fellowship. Ladies and gentlemen, we have presented to you today the interest of Bishop Elect and of Samuel Edmonds.
scriptures. Yes, Lord. And uh, I'm going to call this that I'm going to say it now. We're going to call the, the reading of the Old Testament, the reading of the Epistle, and the reading of the Gospel, and then we'll be led in prayer. In that order, if you will, sir. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. I do greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. I want to say God bless each and every one of you. I give honor to all the bishops here today and all of us church. God bless you. We're going to read uh, the scripture for the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, beginning at verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord, God, is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bound up the broken heart, yes. to proclaim liberty to the captives, yes. and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, uh -huh. to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, yes, and the day of vengeance of our God, yes. to cover all that mourn, yes. to appoint unto them that mourn and die, to give unto them beauty for ashes, yes, the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaven, yes. that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall fill their old ways. They shall raise up the form of desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your thoughts. And the sons of Abraham shall be your plowmen and your main vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall you boast yourselves. For your shame you shall have double. And for your confusion they shall re rejoice in their portions. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy. Be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for bread offering. And I will direct their work in truth. And I will make everlasting covenant with them. The word of God for God's people. Come on, give God praise and glory. <laughs> The Episcopal reading of 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. This is a true saying. Yeah. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. Yeah. A bishop then must be blameless, mm -hmm. the husband of one wife, yeah. visitor, soul of good behavior, given to hospitality apt to teach, not given too much wine, nor striking, not greedy or filthy, nor, but patient, not a brawler, but not covetous, one that ruled well in his own house, having his children under subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he rule the church of God? Not a voice least being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacon be grave, not double tongue, not given too much wine, not given to given of filthy learning. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Now the gospel. Reading will come from St. John 20, verses 19 to 23. St. John 20, verses 19 
through 23. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. The word of God. Amen. Amen. Father Jehovah, we come to you with praise in our hearts at this time, telling you, Lord, thank you for all things. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for this occasion, Lord, of the consecration and elevation, Lord God, of Bishop Elect Samuel Edmonds, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord God, as he is elevated, Lord, this elevation is for you. And we thank you so much, Lord God, for the purpose by which you have called him to this great place. Uh, Lord God, we pray that because of that, that you enlarge his territory, that you expand his reach, Lord God, for the expansion of your gospel, Lord God, for the extending of your kingdom, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you will use this man, Lord God, to get the gospel out, that you will use him, Lord God to heal many more, to touch many more, to bring many more to Jesus Christ. We pray that you touch us right now, Lord. And in that elevation and in such a great work, we know, Lord God, that as he does it, the enemy might try to come from this way and that way. But we bind the very attack of the devil right now, Lord God. We know that hell cannot prevail, Lord God, against anything that you are building. And so, Lord God, we pray that you cover him from the very crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Lord God, no weapon formed against him shall be able to crush the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. But, Lord God, I pray and lift up the weapon formers. I pray and lift up those ones, Lord God, because your word says, pray for those, Lord God, that try to stand against us, spitefully use us, persecute us, Lord God. Say all oh, manner of evil against us. We pray for those ones, Father, in love, that you will bring them under subjection. But let nothing stand in the way of your will. Let nothing stand in the way of what you have ordained and what you have ordered and what you have consecrated. Come up by the name and in the blood of Jesus Christ, his ministry. Lord, I thank you right now. And I believe you, Lord God, to do all things. Because the word says so. Because it is written. Because it is ordained. It shall be, and that is it, Lord God. Whatever you say shall be, and that's going to be. And we can say from that, Lord, amen. In Jesus' name, amen.
We believe that the Bible is the inspired and forbidden word of God, penned by the hand of the high, of the holy man chosen by God. We believe there is only one way to God, the Father, through Jesus the Christ, by the way of salvation. We believe in the fivefold ministry is to be active in the, today's Christ. We believe in the resurrection word, work of Christ on the cross which settled the sin, death for all humanity. We believe in the resurrection of the regeneration of the unsaved, one unto eternal life, and the letter unto the eternity now dominated. We believe in the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to the gathering of his holy church. We believe in the privilege of prayer. Whereas the believers can communicate with the salvation God with condition that he have heard us. We believe in the land of the hand, speaking in tongues, and the spirit of God give us utterance. Thank you. 
give the Lord a hand now. I tell you the Lord.
Alfred, you want to present to this man of God, amen? Okay. Now we get ready to be a blessing to the preacher. Let's say amen. Now when he got those people, come on, get that in there. Right. Take those pills away, let's go. Take them to other. Get them around there. We're going to start this off with $20. Come on. We ain't got no speaker, we got a preacher to say bye. Yeah, I know he's gonna preach a bye, so we know be a blessing to him, amen. Amen. Thank you, see you. Okay, here we are. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, give us a okay, the spirit go. I'm gonna be out of your way below. I think you come and bring your own. Bring your own. First, let him bring it. Let him bring it. Let him bring it. First, let him bring it. Let him bring it. Let him bring it. Come on. Let him bring it.
and I urge you to hear the word of God that come from his mouth on today. Because the power is in the word of God. Our deliverance in here is in the word of God. So hear you for his grace and his ability that God has bestowed upon him. So say along be seen, choir.
Let him go out of hand and clap on his legs. Go by him. Go by him. Go by him. Go by him. Amen. We are grateful. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're grateful to God. Amen. Amen. For the Lord allowing us to be at Wilson Chapel yes. one more time. Yes. Amen. We're grateful and thankful for the Lord has blessed us again. Yes. Amen. Amen. We do honor the presiding prelate of the believers in fellow believers in Christ fellowship. Amen. I'll get it right. Amen. Dr. Bishop Dr. Gore. Amen. Yes, we have a great day. Come on, give me a big hand. Certainly to Lady Gorman, as president of the world. And to all my brothers and sisters in ministry that are here. Amen. Male and female. Amen. Give them a hand if you will. Bishop-elect, amen, Pastor Edmonds and Lady Edmonds, amen. I'm so glad that God has, amen, amen, a portion to us uh, this day in history, amen. Amen, it's a beautiful day, amen, I thought about, amen, all the way from the drums. Amen. Amen. The way he is right now. Amen. Amen. Ain't God good? You never know where God is going to take you. Amen. Amen. We thank God today. Amen. Thank God for this choir. Amen. I thought I saw some folks from St. Peter's Snow Hill somewhere around here. Moreover, he must have a good report 
of them which are without, lest he fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil. You may be seeing the presence of the Lord. I want to echo verse 1, if you will. This is a true saying. If a man desire, be careful what you desire. If a man desire the office of bishop, the Bible says he desires to do work. I just want to preach this evening. The Lord help us from subject briefly a good work. A good work. It is time like today that it's very necessary to remind every servant of God that we are called to a good work. There's nothing wrong with the joy and the beauty of a ceremonial ecclesiastical celebration to honor and the majesty of this, this new beginning is very noteworthy. It is more than reasonable to mark the milestone of such a divine elevation. Y'all won't help me today. But when tomorrow comes and the day after and the next year comes when the cheers die down and the congratulations stop when the long sleepless nights come and Satan comes against you with all his devils. He's going to take everything you've got to remain and maintain enough focus to remember that he called you to do a good work. The only work that he will bless in your life is the one he called you to do. Can I get a witness? As Paul reminds the Philippian church, so I remind us today, it is not your work. Philippians 1 and 6, be confident of this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Y'all better come on, but wait for it. It is his work, and you are just the one he chooses to use. Can I say that again? It is his work. You just so happen to be the one he chooses to you. And if you stay in his way, he will perform the work in you. Ain't God all right? See, we ain't got to worry about whether it'll get done or not. All we got to do is stay in the will of God. He establishes the boundaries of your work. Philippians 2 and 13, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. No worry, you can't get caught up on what you want to do. Because it's a good work that he's doing through you. Can I get a witness today? Don't get impressed with yourself. Can I talk to somebody? Don't get impressed with who you are. Because the work he gave you, he can take it away. Many of us lose our anointing. We lose our position because we get impressed with who we are. But the same God that anointed you will take it away from you. God, help me today. Don't concern yourself with another man's work. First Thessalonians 3, 1 and 3, remember Paul said, ah, without ceasing your work ah, of faith, ah, your labor of love, ah, patience of hope, ah, in our Lord Jesus Christ, ah, in the sight of God, ah, and our Father, ah, in God all right, ah, don't cease from this work of faith. Ah, it is not a work you don't know every step you take. Ah, it is a work of faith. Ain't God all 
the hour we have on earth. We must have a good report of them that are without. It ain't what the church is saying about you. What is they saying outside the door? You want it. And I love how Paul said, you must have this. What do they say? Who is screaming about you? You can't drink with the folk on the club. You come back and be a bishop on Sunday. We are called for a good work. A consecrated work. And we need to be like Nehemiah. When they call for him, say, I'm doing a good work. And I can't come down. Why would I come down and mess with you? I'm doing a good work. It's a good work. And I don't know about you, but I have this thing in me that tells me that I was born to do this work. I was born for this. I don't worry about the trials. The truth is, don't worry about those that talk and stand. See, I have read that God is going to take care of this. But stay, stay, Bishop Emerson, stay with the good work that God has called you to do. Don't worry about these other bishops. They were called to do work in their day. You are called today. There are people that you, oh my God, that you will reach that they can reach. He knows what he's doing. All we have to do is stay in our lane. Do all we want. And God will take care of you. Come on, give God a hand. Anybody want to do work? Anybody want to do work for him? Title. You can be the, the bishop's son, 
Amen. And you ain't been saved yet. You're on your way to hell. So if you understand my voice, while I'm crossing something, step out of now. Give your heart to the Lord. It's a mighty good thing. You ain't got to join my church. But join somebody's church. To be chosen by God. It's getting late now. People are dying every day. It's time to make up our minds. COVID has gone by. And over a million people worldwide have lost their lives. And some of us are still yet unsaved. What will it take? For you to give your to life to the Lord when you're chosen by God. Yes, yes, yes. It's my job to call. It's, it's your job to call. To be chosen. You may be seated in this person with me. I feel that I've destroyed my duties. It's a good work. God bless you today.
God, the awesome word of God. Ready, ready not to move forward at this time. In my life. He said something in the message that really let me know. I have been preaching now myself for 52 years. Concentrated about 15 Amen. bishops. And that's what he said. So today, we're going to train somebody else. Right. Concentrated bishop, going to be bishop. Uh, Gregory going to take over this morning. Here out this concentration. Give the Lord a hand. Have a word. I can't stand around. 
My brother, you have been chosen by us, and the people have affirmed their trust in you. By claiming their trust in you, by claiming your appointment. A bishop in God's holy church is called to be one with apostles in proclaiming Christ's resurrection and interpreting the gospel and to testify to Christ's sovereignty as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. You are called to God of faith, called to unity and discipline of the church, to celebrate and to provide for the administration of the sacraments of the new covenant, to ordain the elders and deacons, and to join in ordaining bishops, and to be in all things a faithful pastor and wholesome example for the entire flock of Christ. With your fellow bishops, you will share in the leadership of the church throughout the world. Your heritage is the faith of patriarchs, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those of every generation who have looked to God in hope. Your joy will be to follow him who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Bishop elect Edmonds, are you persuaded that God has called them, called you to the office of bishop? I am so persuaded. Bishop elect Samuel Edmonds Sr., will you accept this appointment and fulfill this in obedience to Christ? I will obey Christ and will serve his name. Bishop elect Samuel Edmund Sr., will you be faithful in prayer and in the study of the Holy Scriptures that you may have the mind of Christ 
I will, for Christ is my help. Bishop elect Samuel Edmonds, Sr., will you maintain and exemplify the wisdom that is from above, which is pure, then peaceable, gentle, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without penalty, without hypocrisy, among all people. I will, in the name of Christ, seek to pass and go under my care. Bishop elect Samuel Edmund Sr., through these promises you have committed yourself to God to serve your church in the office of bishop. We therefore call upon you to be guardian of the church of faith, to lead us in confessing that faith. I believe in my God. At this time, we ask everyone to recite together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. Thereafter signing the declaration and the two witnesses, we 
men will have the actual consecration certificate signed as well. This time we're going to prepare for the charge. Believers in Christ, Fellowship of America Incorporated has expressed confidence in you, in your character, in your devotion to Christ and to the church, and your ability to direct the affairs and to promote the general interest of the entire church. In fact, she has signaled to honor you by selecting you in this high office. Believers in Christ and Power and Fellowship Incorporated has assigned you as bishop. The following duties are to uphold and to defend the word of God, to obey and to defend the constitution of believers in Christ and Power and Fellowship Incorporated, to seek out and discover in cooperation with the elders and congregations, a suitable pastor for each congregation under your care, to ensure ministerial improvement and leadership training by planning pastor study groups and in service trainings and ministerial retreats to inspire the pastors to spiritual growth and personal improvement for more effective witnessing for Christ and his kingdom, to encourage visitations among pastors in the homes, hospitals, and penial institutions, to stimulate by your life an example as well as by your preaching the outlook and vision of your people and inspire them to holy living and more dedication to the total program of the church to seek out communities in your jurisdiction into which a Christian witness might be effectively carried. Amen. At this time, we are ready to prepare for the actual consecration we need everyone to stand with us at this time. We are going to ask requests of the We're going to ask our adjectives to please come. And we'll assist our brother in actually laying prostate on the floor at the altar.
to those that are standing. In the book of Matthew, Jesus instructed the disciples with a model prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer. And we're going to ask everyone, under the sound of my voice, to prepare them as we give forth for the Lord's Prayer at this time. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, you may be seated. We get ready to prepare now for our section of the consecration. We ask now, as we move forward, that our adjutants stand real close with him. The removal of his shoe on the right foot and his toe. We also have the oil. We're going to prepare now for the actual anointing. This time we're going to ask Bishop Sherlock Gregory to come and stand with us as well. And as he's coming down, him being our former Southern District Prelate, we're going to ask that his hand be upon the Lord. Allow him to be upon his hand to the Lord. And there are three places that we will anoint. First of all, anoint his head. Father, we thank you now that as his head is being anointed, that God should give him divine wisdom of your word. Father, give him a mind like you, that he will be effective in the bishopric, and that he will be effective in his calls, gifts, and assignments. Thou anoint our head with oil, and as his head is being anointed with oil, let his cup put over. That the remaining days of his life, he will be an effective servant in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask that his finger be anointed. And that's it. Even as his finger and his hand is being anointed, allow that to be an anointing. For the gift of laying on hand, casting out devils, speaking to things and calling things into filtration, haunting the direction that the congregation must go, anoint that hand with fire and light in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is so by faith. Now we will anoint his ear. Right here. Even as God, you took John the Revelator out on the outer campus. Father, as you've anointed him and instructed him to write to the seven minor churches of Asia, you said, He that have an ear, let him hear. We decree and declare that that spiritual hearing will intensify, that there will be a sensitivity in his ear to hear the voice of God with clarity. And understand that he will guard the hear gate from anything the enemy tries to transpose. Let there be fire in the ear now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. And it is so. Now we come now to the next part. We're going to anoint the big toe. As we anoint the right foot, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. 
God, we decree and we declare right now mm -hmm. that as his foot and his token being anointed, God, allow his steps to be ordered in the direction that you desire he should go as a man of God mm -hmm. in the office of bishop. Father, that he will be an awesome leader in this season, in this elevated assignment, that wherever you tell him to go, his feet will follow your spirit. And he will be able to go into places, and even if by happen he steps on any scorpions or serpents, mm -hmm. any deadly thing, it shall not harm him, because his steps are ordered by you. We decree it, and we declare it right now. Therefore, Father, make him a bishop in your church. Pour out upon him your priceless spirit. Amen. You who bestowed upon your beloved son Jesus Christ with him, he endowed the apostles and by whom your church is built up in every place to glory and unceasing praise of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And every believer shouted, Amen. 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 Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Father God, as we stand now as we begin to anoint this man of God to a greater work, your word talk about the work today, and we thank you for the word. Now I know that I'm not ahead of him. Now, Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but you know God. He desired the good work in God. We know there's work need to be done. For the harvest plain. But the labor of few. When he labels in the vineyard. Anoint him fresh, God. When it rises upon his feet, God, it'll stand like it never stood before. Because we know now it was a glory and fire that never shot at him or shoot at it now. Because you have elevated him to another level. But I know God, you will protect him, cover him all around. We know you more than just got his back. God, know you got a cover like you had Job. You got a fence built around him. The defense all around this man of God. They go forward in the labor. The gospel you lay before him. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Congregation may be seated as he raised upon his feet. Service back in your hand.
Lord, everybody. Amen. At this time, we're preparing for the envisioning at this time. What we see that he has on already is his, the color of the bishop, which is purple. He has on his collar. The history of our church is that when you see the rounded collar, the reason why we wear our collars is because during that time, preaching the gospel, you got your head cut off. And so what they would do is they would wear a metal chain around their neck so they couldn't cut their head off. That is the symbolics of why we wear our collar. So right now he has his civic attire on. When he has the civic attire on, it's to be worn with a black suit or the appropriate color with a gray suit with his chain in his left pocket closest to the heart. The next piece I'm going to call, it is the cassock. This garment is worn during the service as a symbol of an elder and a servant. As he's been placed with this, we're going to ask his wife to start at the bottom with the button. We're going to ask the adjutant, his armor bearer, to start from the top. The bishop continues to wear the cassock as a part of his guard because Jesus instructed that he who would be chief among you must be a servant first. So this is a servant guard that we see being placed. And each button represents the life of Jesus. No other minister, evangelist, deacon, teacher, prophet can wear this but the bishop. Our next piece that is coming, it is the Rachi. a development of the app and futures very full sleeves tied intro fields at the waistband wristband it is the ceremony garment similar to that of a serpent it's longer with sleeves various and only worn by bishops and apostles that this garment serves as a symbol of the priesthood it is symbolic of Aaron's white linen, ephod, found in the book of Leviticus. This white brochet worn by the bishops or apostles and the white servants worn by the elders is a symbol of 
the wares world as a celebrant of the sacraments, the sacraments, and chief worship. It's time we're putting our wristbands on the bishop. Elect. Our next piece is the Shemir. This garment is a symbol of the mantle of the prophet. Only the bishop or the apostles wears it. The Shemir sets him apart as the chief proclaimer and the defender of the faith. As the priest carries the prayers of the people to God, the prophet, he carries the word of God back to the people of God. Our next piece that is coming is the tippet. The tippet is a black ceremony scar worn over the shemir. The bishop seal should be on the left side. The organization should be on the right side. And any churches that he come in contact with, he can place any seal on the scarf or the tip. Our next piece is the Zaquero. A small cat to honor the head as he approaches God as a priest. At this time, we're going to place the Beretta on top of the bishop. Our next piece is coming is the pictorial cross, suspended by a golden chain. This is hung around the bishop's neck as a symbol of his imprisonment for Christ. It is made of gold, which is the most enduring non terrorist material. The chain that is suspended by it, it is not for jewelry or decoration, but it represents the chain of a prisoner for we are prisoners of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul wrote his chain with pride that I am counted worthy to suffer afflictions for the gospel's sake. This chain is worn by bishops and apostles only. The color is gold. That is the correct chain to be worn by a bishop or an apostle. Anything else is worn with that is out of order. The next piece is the ring. Receive as a symbol of authority. Guard the faith, unity, and disciple of Christ. Holy Apostolic Church. The bishop ring represents sonship with all the apostles of the age. It also represents Jesus' marriage to the bride of God, to the church. He becomes the guardian of God's wife, the church. The crozier. With what we call it, the staff. This means shepherd's staff, whereby the bishop gathers the flock, God. It is symbolic 
of the one giving to Moses as he exhaled from Egypt. It is the symbol of authority and strength. In Psalms 23, 5, David says, Thou rod and thou staff comfort me. The Bible, the word of God is presented to the bishop as the book of faith and authority. The bishop is the defender and the proclaimer of the word of God as contained in the Holy Scripture. It is the guide and the standard for life in Psalms 119.89 and 1 Peter 1, 24 and 25. When you look at Bishop and his garments, these are the corrected garments as a bishop. We ask that you return to the congregation at this time. You might want to take pictures. Go ahead and do it right now. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. 
opportunity. Let's give a man, Mr. Gregory, and a man, and a lockdown minister. Come on, grab a hand for a job. Come on, 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 come so I just so pass it on. We thank God we're training them up. Amen. 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 We thank God that prayer. He has been with me about five or ten of these things. We've been through a whole lot of horror around different denominations. We have concentrated bishops. So we thank God for them and tell my God son. Amen. Amen. Don't let him and all his family or whatever they get him. But to my God son, we thank God for you. We're proud of you. And the job that God has given you. Amen. Hold up, amen. Live this life. God will use your body as your wife. So I want to thank God for the command of it. And all the that God has blessed. And all the that brother and man, all the ministry. Especially to my oldest son in the ministry. Now the James Lindsay. He's a church preacher that came out under me. How many years was it? 47 years ago. He was the first preacher that came out of my ministry. And he's the first of, out of 77. He out of that camp since he come out. Let's say amen. I got a whole lot of children out there, y'all. Amen. Some went back, some fell strong, but most of them are going strong. Get a lot of that. This time, we're going to read out words of encouragement. Who are you born with the word of encouragement? Conjurement, Don Davis. When you come, amen. Say it, no, you can see it. Oh, I'm calling you. Amen. Oh, God. He wants to know what he's doing. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Wow. We do indeed give honor to God. To Bishop, our chief, consecrate Bishop, Bishop Gore, Bishop Gregory, to all of the bishops and ministers, the mothers, the deacons, to each and every one of you that's here today. We're thankful for you. And yes, and yes, <laughs> and yes, to Bishop. Samuel and his wife. I'm truly honored to be here today. And Bishop, let me say to you, if I may, we've known each other for a couple decades. And um, he makes sure I look good most of the time. <laughs> The other times I don't go to them because I'm running around all over the place. But you look good today. You look like a bishop. <laughs> and let me say to each and every one of you, truly, in the couple decades I have known the bishop. And I was looking at the consecration and when we got down to the Anointing this script. And it was said, the steps of order. Just so encouraged and inspired because even in the brief moments where you have been together over the many years, he's always been encouraging, inspiring. He even sends things, his words, to keep me going. And I appreciate that. And it was no doubt in my mind that your steps have been ordered. All right, yes, sir. And I just want to come to say, I thank God for you. I thank God for your friendship. See, he's known me when I went back as mayor. Knew me back in the days, even in the Senate, and 
And he just prayed for me and encouraged me and inspired me. And I thank God for it. He was doing the work. He was doing the work. Pastor Thompson. He was doing that work. <laughs> doing that work. All right. God bless you and your friends. <laughs> but I want to say today as I come on behalf of the person who rests on this to remind us of the words of my man. Even the preamble, this is appropriate. The preamble of the Constitution. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, Establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings, blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do hear these words in the Constitution? Do ordain. Then establish the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution to be clear. It says you can't establish one religion. However, there's no prohibition to the free exercise of faith. So have no doubt that as we come together to witness such a consecration of your mission. That this is indeed about the perfecting, the perfecting yes, yes. of our community, our state, and our In other words, I'm going to say it this way. I've come to encourage all of us and especially our bishops today. Because our nation will not become better. We will not perfect this union without consecration. Without you. It takes all of us using those talents that God has given us make our families, our communities, and this union better. I thank God for you. And as you have prayed and inspired me today, I count it an honor and a blessing to come to live the brief word of encouragement at this time as this. Do not and I love you dearly. Thank you for being a friend to me. And I say to you, be real a bit in the pro. Because <laughs> I've been used to the Lord for so long. <laughs> and God bless you, my friend. And yes, because of this consecration, I believe we will be better. Therefore, I take confidence in saying, may God bless us, and may God bless America.
didn't know I would be here to see this day. But God, God knew it all. And I tell you, it's just an honor to be here, to be a part a one of my kindergarten students. You see all this gray hair? He put part of it up. <laughs> but I thank God. He was one. He was he was a good one. Because one thing about it, he knew if I had any problem with him, all I had to do make a phone call. And when he got home, Mom and Daddy took care of the rest, so I didn't have any problem. But I can say, to God be the glory. Thank God. Keep on being you. I don't know what he done from around me, but when he got around me, he always walked the straight lane. Because he knew that I didn't play it. And so I do thank God for you. I love you. I'm going to keep on loving you. I'm going to love you even more. You know, I, I, you know I was your mom, and so now I'm really your mom. <laughs> but I thank God, thank God for the invitation. When he asked me to come, I said, well, he said, you got to come. You gave me my first start. Yes. Yes, Bishop Gregory. He's another one. <laughs> but I thank God. I thank God. It's just an honor just to be here. I do thank God for you. And may God just be at your speed, just to keep on, keep on teaching, preaching, and living the word that we, not me, others, will be able to follow in your footsteps and see the good that you are doing. Amen. That's all in Now let us thank her.
before everyone else. But last but not least, my beautiful wife, who is my helpmate. Neither one of us saw this coming. Neither one of us probably in the past. But what we decide together to do for ourselves, Jesus has our Savior. And we won't gonna leave apart. We won't leave together. We don't stand together. We don't pray together. We don't love together. We don't preach together. Most of all, we don't live it together. So I'm so glad I got a mate that can keep me straight. And I can keep her straight. And we can start having a church at the house before we get to the church. And then we don't have to depend on nobody else to have a church. And I just want to say to you today, if I ain't never told you, ain't no woman like the woman I got. I just want to say I love you. The road hasn't been easy. But I thank God, I thank God for everyone. I'm not even going to get in the habit of calling names. But I say to my classmate, Bishop Tony O'Grady, we clerk for each other. He clerked the class, I take the money. I clerked the class, he take the money. But now we are, uh, we're, at, we're in our office now, but we both got to do the right thing. He do wrong, I got to get him. I do all you got to get me. So I want to say to Bishop Antonio you Greg, I thank you for mastering this sermon. I don't think it could have been no better. He called me every day, sometimes three times a day. If I told him I was at work, he said, call me when you get off. And he knew what time I was getting off, so he gave me five minutes to call. But I didn't call, he called me. So I want to say to Bishop Antonio Greg, I thank you, the beautiful wife. Your dad. I just thank everybody. I'm just happy today. And of course, Apostle Garrett, you know, um, he's the one that teaches me to be out of the side. You know, he can come up with a word that I've never heard before. <laughs> I want to say to Apostle Garrett, I, I really thank you for being a friend. Mr. Smith, a little testimony. I thank you for being there when the doctor report came in and I feel like I didn't have a brother. And I call on you and you can. Yes. Amen. You don't have to know my story that understand that I can pray. Amen. We gotta get I have to quit trying to tell the story and just live that life and pray that somebody will live to get saved. Just one thing that get the church and have to. But when you step him as your savior.